Lance Bolton. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I personally will do not want to mess with Monique, although I probably, I, know, I now know why she gave me the cold shoulder in class. A reminder of the masturbating roommate. <laughs> But I got the chakras going on, so I don't know. I don't know why, girl. Why? So I am. Uh, I am not drunk, not stoned. I'm not going to talk to you about hard-ons or Viagra. Who's relieved about that? <laughs> yeah. But I'm on the downward slope of life, you know. And I'm just trying to keep myself amused. But I got this rage, and it's like simmering, just below the surface, and it concerns me, because you know I can appear just like this. And then before you know it, it's like, <laughs> sorry, I'm back. <laughs> Don't tell me I'm the only one. <laughs> All right. But I'm a mom, and I'm like looking for a little recognition. You know, I'm really just a stopgap, which is a layover to something else better. I'm like the Uber service to the party. I'm the payment plan for the cool new hoodie. I'm the confidant for the unusual itch that has just shown up. <laughs> and you know, like being a mom is like fucking IT department. Anybody here, here work in IT? Yeah, you're, it's all a thankless fucking job, isn't it? It's like your 24 hour a day help desk, your worried about facilitating communication between two teenagers. I got a 15-year-old and a 17-year-old, and I'm worried about their data protection. I'm also trying to get a lot of other protection into their hands, given their ages. I'm like a Pez dispenser for birth control. Here, take this. No, take that. No, take this. Your friend will need it. Just take it. Take it. Uh, but I'm in my... I've, I'm, I've, Midlife crisis, hello, where'd that go? Midlife crisis, I'm experiencing it right now here on the stage. <laughs> and I'm kind of in the second phase of it. The first phase was a lot like the Stanford Prisoner Project. Anybody heard of this? Yeah, okay. And I'm like flipping mattresses, banging pots and pans. And my husband's like the warden, confiscating my privileges. <laughs> Fucking bitch. <laughs> and you know, I have this side hustle going on and I'm like, burlesque dancing, having sex in the car. Don't worry, I was with my husband. <laughs> Maybe a few others. So it's awkward, he's here. <laughs> but you know, in my mom duties one out, I, I had to become a girl guide leader. So that'll kill every edge you thought you had. So I'm like, I better, I better straighten up and wear full bum panties and stop swearing and uh, let them call me. Tawny Owl Guider. <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's really hard to, like, how am I skit performing and song singing when really I just was showing my tits to people a couple weeks ago? <laughs> I don't quite go together. But you know, I thought, like, if I just cooked and cleaned for four people, maybe that would be fulfilling enough. So I gave it all up. And now I'm in my second midlife phase, and I call it the middle-aged pity party. And my friend says, what is that? No, it's not the new label for the NDP. <laughs> I know we're in New West. Uh, but no, it's like, no, it's the whining, boring mess that is me who doesn't want to leave the house after 7 p.m. Apparently, you can't be very interesting if you don't leave the house after 7 p.m. <laughs> Sir, did you know that? <laughs> Look at you, you're out here late. <laughs> So yeah, I'm in my, I'm in my, uh, oh God, where am I? So I'm married to a 40-something year old man and he likes to diddle <laughs> with his bike. And you would think it is a 5'10 blonde with the care and attention that he provides that bike. Hell, I would take the 5'10 blonde because I'd have someone to talk to. <laughs> And my son, he's gonna leave the house as of fall, and I'm so I'm cramming in, like teaching him to cook and clean and sort the clean white crew socks from the crunchy ones <laughs> on the floor. Um, but uh, and you know, middle age, like what is up with my algorithms? It's like I'm getting recipes for expanding waistlines, leisure wear, and what is my fart trying to tell me? <laughs> 
yes, that gem showed up today. And I'm like, never in all of my years have I thought, what is my fart trying to tell me? So, and you know, how, how subtle is this message? Because th the differences in gases seems imperceivable to me. Uh, and then I got paranoid. Maybe I should be paying more attention to what my fart's trying to tell me. And then my husband's algorithms are way more fun. He's got like big boob girls in t-shirts on Timu. I'm like, what the fuck is Timu? <laughs> they appear to be selling t-shirts, but I think it's just middle-aged masturbation <laughs> material. You ever bought anything off Timu? No? You got, do you have any big boob ladies on your algorithms? He says yes. <laughs> Good for you. He's owning it in front of this whole room. That's right. He's like, I got big breasted women on my algorithms and no bitch runs my life. I love it. Good for you. Okay. Uh, but you know, but I'm going to finish with this. Mid being middle-aged is rough and I'll, let me tell you why. It's all the middle-aged people around you. Young people do not want to be my friend. You know, they take one look at me and I can see it in their face. They're like, shit. They're grabbing the skin tightening cream. They're straightening up their posture. Because I remind them of where they're going. And the old people, like, they'll be my friend, but they're like, you know, they're great if you want a story 19 times. So I, I'm left with the middle-aged crew. And, you know, I, I have this dear friend who's a middle-aged crew. And she has friends dying around her everywhere. And I'm like, how is she replenishing the stock? <laughs> like, is she going to these celebrations of life and handing out her digits on the regular? Like, what is happening? And she, bless her heart, I'm like, she's the queen of the PSA. She's not a hoot at a party. She shows up and, you know, we're having a laugh and she's like, we should all get colonoscopies at our age. <laughs> Colon cancer is very dangerous. Oh, keep it to yourself. And then we're changed topics and we're talking about the kids going, there's meningitis cases increasing in universities. It's like having Ebenezer Scrooge on your shoulder without the endearing journey backwards in personal growth. <laughs> so I need a pact. It's like when I had little kids, you know, I knew who the moms were where we had the pact. It's like, we are not gonna talk about how brilliant and gifted our children are. No, we're fucking gonna get on with our day. So I need a pack of midlifers who are like, I had got no ailments. I don't care about your ailments. I'll sleep when I'm dead. So too will you. Let's hit the Garden of Eden tonight. Who's with me? Let's go. <laughs> of course, it's past 7 p.m. So that's my time. Thank you. Good energy. Give it up for Joanne Spa.